I was afraid the garage was going to collapse on us at some point because it had mold. Um, it looked like it was going to get mold. It's actually something that Mo kept from me until now. <laughs> That our previous podcast studio had mold and could have collapsed on us at any minute. We only spent and that's why we're six here. Six months there in our new podcast studio for our very first podcast. Welcome to Sweethearts. Sweethearts. I thought that was part of the set. That little pink uh, can. Oh no! This is a BYO white grape. Cheers. Cheers. Don't um, don't touch those. Okay. Well, I'm sorry. Um, these are fake, and that is that's. Maybe the only thing, fake thing about us. Yeah. The, oh, well, my glasses fake are tooth. fake. You have a fake tooth? Implant. We're That's already getting my into only the, <laughs> the teeth implants. Oh, yeah. Well, this is a podcast called Sweethearts. Yes. Um, we will be talking about our I, dental work a yeah, lot. If you don't know who I am, and I don't expect you to. Uh, my name is Beth Stelling, and I'm from Dayton, Ohio. And my name is Mo Welch, and I'm from Normal, Illinois. And Mo is actually short for mom. I am also a mom. Thank you for outing me. <laughs> I really try to keep that secret in my set now. Like I, I will like for five minutes go and just pretend like I'm not a mom until I say something. So it's a bad. huge reveal. I'll be it honest. is a reveal. And mm. then 10 minutes and I say I'm gay, you know, <laughs> another big reveal. Yeah. Just all reveals these days. Yeah. When you're not dressed like that, it's tougher to tell. Yeah, it's true. <laughs> like a porn director. <laughs> and Eddie. my lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> That's actually how we met. No, we met doing stand up in Chicago, Illinois. Yeah. We tried to think about the first time that we met because I think it was at a bar called The Fizz, correct? I don't know if there was a the in front of it. Uh, you're right. I put but a there the was... in front of it. It's like, I think it's a Midwestern thing. The... Like Nordstrom's, we were talking about. Like, oh, right, just... right. Um, Making things plural. We're adding an S to it. I think that's yeah. maybe more of a grandpa thing. Mimi's mm. or Friendly. Friendly's mm -hmm. is a difficult one. That was my favorite restaurant growing up in Ohio. I think it's actually Friendly. I think I've been there. It's so good. A okay. grilled cheese and a conehead sundae. Get out of here. <laughs> and then some ketchup, which, you know, not a lot of people know is mostly sugar. That's just not just tomatoes. Tomatoes, tomatoes, tomatoes and are water. Fruit. Yeah, Aww. sugar. Sugar water. I told you that normal is uh, the first steak and shake was in normal, right? Yeah, and these are kind of some of our credits. <laughs> this um, is like, some people have IMDb Pro. Yeah. And this is what we have. And for me, Dayton is known for Guided by Voices, which is a band that I've actually never listened to. It, is it a Christian band? Sounds like it. Okay. If it was Christian, I think it'd be Guided by Voice, just one. Um, God. Voices might be. Or maybe it's Father, Son, Holy Ghost are the voices. I don't know. We'll we'll link you to some of their albums. <laughs> <laughs> I love that that's what Dayton is known and for. And the Breeders. And the Wright Brothers. And the Wright Brothers, which I discuss at length in my Netflix special, If You Didn't Want Me Then, which, Ad. which was directed by none other than Mom Welch. Hey. Yes. Ad. Okay, the truth is. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so yes. much. <laughs> um, the truth is it stands for Maureen, but nobody yeah. Google her. Yeah, yeah. It is Maureen. I go by Maureen when I'm directing. Yeah, um, Maureen Mo Welch. You do talk about the Wright Brothers for at least 10 minutes, which I think that no other comedian has done that. <laughs> <laughs> and that's actually kind of a call to action for anybody who's out here uh, listening as a comedian. Beat 10 minutes on Wilbur and Orville Wright. <laughs> Come for me. Um. So anyway, I kind of feel like I do remember the first time that we met on the Chicago scene. Please. Probably no, would have been leave. 2007. 2008, nine or nine. 10. Got yes. it. And I was kind of close. Mm -hmm. 2009, fizz. I just believe it's one word. You would go into the bar, decent food, although my palate has changed. Right. <laughs> I used to eat <laughs> greasy cardboard. Honestly, that's when I was like noodles and company. It was, it was like my favorite Rome. meal. That was like it's rich. Rome. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You're right. Noodles and Company was freaking rich people food. Like, should we get Noodles and Co? I don't know, babe. It's not our anniversary. Too rich for my blood. <laughs> <laughs> Their desserts were actually pretty good, and I'm a bit of a connoisseur on that. Mm -hmm. Their Rice crispy. Oh, yes. It yes. aired toward too sugary, which is not something I'm going to say that often. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you'd go in. Food wasn't so bad. My mom's been there. Has Mary been to Fizz? 
I don't think so. Because that was some of my first showcases, right? Was there was it a upstairs? show called- Am I wrong? It's upstairs. Okay, You would Great. go through the bar and upstairs to where the comedy was. Pretty big room, mm -hmm. if you think about it. Especially because a lot of times five audience members, <laughs> six. Well, I don't. I wasn't on those. Okay, I was. Um, <laughs> but I remember my bagel boyfriend, Chris, coming. My mom came to- It was like a cool place to do comedy because people did come out because it was eventually- a uh, show called Comedians You Should Know, which got really popular when we were around. Oh, okay. Okay. And so Mo shows up, I think, to do a guest set mm -hmm. is what I felt like. And I I mean, you guys have eyes. You're looking at Mo. Um, she's hot. And so when she first showed up, I was like, With who's this, this dumb blonde? No, I'm just kidding. I Tell did them say what I was wearing, though. She was in a very femmy skirt. It was a skirt to my knees, which was in at the time. <laughs> And it was a I was yellow and it was like doily material. <laughs> and I then I'd wear like a tight shirt on top. And that was like my stage look for maybe like a year. Right. So are, is anybody hard? You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And if I you're not, Mo, maybe get checked by a doctor. And I thought to myself, tr truly, I was like, here's a new hot girl on the scene. Great. I at the time too didn't you feel like there wasn't that many women no and there we were still only kind of, a few of us this hasn't totally changed in comedy but there was sort of a one at a time or one woman's the best or the because one, you were yes, often yes. the only girl on the show one woman on woman. the show yes one at a time yeah. everyone gets their you know it, it be bred like, this sort of very unnecessary competitiveness and if if you're still feeling those feelings life is a marathon not a race and there's room for us all as I push Mo's head down. <laughs> Um, You're like Mo out of the frame. Can you guys do a close up on me for that? <laughs> um, but I did feel those things. I was like, this is a very pretty girl. And who wow. is she? And then you got on stage. And honestly, I do remember too, the other association I have is somebody who smooched on the scene. You I was do? like, why would you bring that up right no, now? No, I was, I know. Unfortunately, in Didn't comedy, you kiss you. with so, you kiss so many comedians that I was just like, <laughs> which one? Like, See, okay, but Mo has kissed a bunch of comedians. I've dated them just because I refuse to be happy. And yes, you haven't really dated a no, ton of comedians. No, I kissed a and lot that's of- something that you should add to your IMDb. I'm thinking about doing it. I'm thinking about getting a divorce and kissing more comedians. <laughs> um... <laughs> Beth was the, you were the girl in the scene when I met you, though. You were, like, the one that was, and I at, was at all the shows. And I was sort of chubby, and I wore a lot of baby doll dresses. You were doing uh, the Entertaining Julia. Mm -hmm, which was a Sunday show. Yes. Um, in Boys Town, which is known to be the gay part of town. And we definitely drank, like, I mean, I we so, got, there I were so many that. nights of us just, like, drank. getting drunk. Yeah, because we don't really drink that much anymore because both of us are people that would rather go to a milkshake than a beer. Yes, exactly. <laughs> when night. it comes to a night out, we would rather go get ice cream together yeah. than get beers. Mm -hmm. In fact... Did we just come up with a business idea? <laughs> Do you want diarrhea instead of a hangover? <laughs> Trade in a hangover headache and losing your job for cavities, diarrhea, and lack of sleep. Because you are sugared out to the max. I think that's a good idea. A, a ice cream it's innocent. Bar is already in there. Ice cream bar. Sometimes I'll the have- sign could be a- An ice cream bar. Clone <laughs> It's just, I'm considering how many people are like lactose intolerant. <laughs> just standing at a bar trying to flirt while you're like, just your stomach is like. <laughs> <laughs> like we would obviously have vegan ice creams. Yeah, but I think those mess with my stomach more than Really? Because it's so sugary. I don't know. It's just like that's. I'm into full fat myself. You might as well. I think if you're having a milkshake, why try to be healthy about a milkshake? I agree. And that's actually something that's happened over the last couple of years because we used to go to Froyo Life. And I have a joke about that in my Netflix half hour, which is available now. Yes. It's called The Stand Up. I did not direct that. No, Mo didn't direct that. Couldn't tell you who did, I'll be honest. Yeah. Fuck them. Well, what year was it when you guys met? We met in 2009, I think. Nine. Mm -hmm. So that means we've been friends for, I'm going to have wait 15. for Mo to do the math. 15. Thanks. Oh, Thank you, 15. Stella. Yeah. <laughs> That's kind of like her on onset researcher producer who just was able to do math that quickly. Yeah. She she Googled it real quick. And what was the answer again? 15. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I feel like um 
Oops, we just touched Whoopsie. feet. I did it on purpose. So one thing about us is we have the same Look, size Looking shoe. like the same size foot. Are you nine and a half? Do you have a big <laughs> too? <laughs> Actually, I'm a, these are a 10, but I'm, I'm, I've okay, kind I'm of, nine. I'm oh, kind right, of an 11 now. changed after yeah. the mom situation. Yeah. Okay. Speaking of clits, but let's yes. go to nips. Just Mo and I did um, a little late night show called After Midnight. We were yes. on a panel with Zach Noe Towers. And after the screen test, I was in a green sweater that was really fuzzy. Did you, I told you what happened, right? No. They took but me I, to wardrobe and they were like, hey, we, we can see your nipples. And no, I said, wait, I didn't know this. I said, absolutely impossible. That's, that's it's like, like telling a fuzzy me, sweater. That's like telling me right now that you can see my nips through these overalls. Yeah. It's like, what, what do you think I have? Razor blades or diamonds for nipples? <laughs> it was the fuzziest sweater of all time. Uh, my nipples so are what not was it? honking. Were you In wearing fact, a bra? They err on the side of smaller. Don't give everything away on the first episode. Okay, I'm sorry. I'm just saying. Wait, so no, what was it? Quite literally, it would be like if I said right now I could see your clit. So it was a shadow. It doesn't make any sense. <laughs> I still have no explanation other than them playing mind games with me over I think at they midnight. were doing that. <laughs> They're trying to throw me off my game so I can't play hashtag wars to my fullest ability. You were wearing, I mean, that was like. It was a very like, fuzzy sweater. It's like getting a boner in. I don't know if you were in a bear suit. Yeah, I, I didn't know where you're gonna go with. That. I didn't either. I was like a knight in shining armor, like okay, a, yeah, yeah like a boner steel. in. What is that called? An armor suit of armor. Yeah, armor suit. A suit of armor. Right really? before the after midnight, I forgot. I'm sorry, I took us on a tangent. Mm. How no, we met? Yeah, we were talking about nipples and clits. <laughs> um, we said we wouldn't. Yeah, no, no, we have something that we were thinking maybe we should not talk about, and we're not gonna talk. Well, we're not going to say should it. we say what it is, but then not talk about it. So then people know what we've banned ourselves from talking about for at least three episodes. You're not going to hear about it until episode four. It starts with a Y and it ends with a. Ouch. Yeast infection. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yes. Yeah, and but honestly, we're not going to talk since about we stopped it. talking about it. I haven't had one. So, yeah. So we're going to continue not to talk about it. Um, until the fourth episode, and that might be a special visit yeast. to the doctor. It might be. Uh, yeah. We could call the doctor. <gasps> we could. We could do a live episode. We could. Do you, you just got your hair done? Did you want to talk about the different hairstyles we've been through with each other? Um, I have. Well, I've kind of been like Roseanne's opening credits the past uh, two years. <laughs> I went brunette. I went. Um, I went to some haircuts where I was definitely misgendered, which is fine, but I was not ready for it. <laughs> Are you seeing here my leg go. here? That's up on a church pew. That was an article. You know when somebody writes an article uh, that just is basically a transcription of your jokes and you're like, could you not do that? Wait, because Stelling is shameless at Glen Memorial Church? What year is this? This is 2018. Yeah, not long ago. Why were you performing at that church? They asked me to. For what? And I don't hold anything back, even you when I am in fully, a church. Your legs are fully spread. I don't and you change held nothing the act back. for my location. You know what I'm saying? And that has gotten some stuff thrown at me. And a man yelled at me when I was in Philly this last weekend. What did he yell? I need to listen to the recording. And I'm sure we have it right here, but it'd be too much to, to go back to. <laughs> this is great. That was when I got my signature haircut. Which was sort of like high in the back, yes. longer in the front. And I kept that for a really long time. My friend Amelia it's did it. The opposite mullet. That it's really just all versions of my hair growing out. Wait, but where's like two thousand where oh. what about what about your first Conan where it was up? Oh God, yeah. Conan twenty twelve. Yes. Okay. So Does she is look a, conservative? <laughs> 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 okay. That that's one of those things where you go. <laughs> you know, I was there for that. <laughs> and okay, you look, the one you on the look right. beautiful. It's just, it's I just, look you like look like grandma. you're going to prom. At like prom for me, or I look like junior prom. Or. I guess it just comes down to the fact that when you do television for the first time, you don't know how to say how to do your hair. Right. You're just like, if, whatever if you're you like, want. You're like, hey, I want it up. And to them, that means prom. Yeah. <laughs> They're like, they heard up and they finished the sentence with do. <laughs> um, what about you, Mo? I'm gonna see. If oh yeah. man, I'm wondering where you can find it. it's. Uh, Mo Welch. 
I don't know if no Welch hair. Where are my short Ooh, hair? There's the short oh, hair. Yeah, the first one's the short hair. Mo hasn't had a ton, but see, she had a few when we were younger out here. See, there's the short see, hair. See that one. This is like I didn't know how to dress with new that haircut, Ellen. to be honest. Yeah, it was like kind of I asked for like Devin Sawa. Yeah, I was gonna say it's giving Devin Sawa. Yeah, it Leonardo was Caprio. honestly a photo that I gave. Devin Sawa, I loved Devin. Leonardo. Loved him. He remains funny to this day. You think he's funny? Yes. Good. <laughs> I love him. Okay, there's some long hair, Mo. Yeah. See what I mean when you see her for the first time? You're like, this is a hot baby. Then you get to know her and it's like, oh, it's just Mo. You're like, she doesn't even wear that doily skirt. <laughs> oh, yeah. <laughs> Loving it. Look at Mo. A full reel. Oh, yeah. Long hair. Wow. Look at Mo Mo. <laughs> this, uh, this is actually how much of a friend I am. I'm delighted by this. That's... <laughs> I'm a fan. You're like, I didn't know you had an acting reel, Mo. I loved it. Tonight is going to be. You look so young here. Oh, wow. Mo. That wasn't even, I was pregnant in that oh. photo. She, yes, these last I, few years have been terrible to her. They really have. Oh, my gosh. Once you have a baby, it like they don't tell you the thing. Well, maybe they do, but I didn't listen. <laughs> they, <laughs> they don't tell you does. anything. Yeah. Mo thought I was going to come out of her b-hole. <laughs> like, Why is it push. coming out the front? Yeah. Wait, is this actually you? Yeah, yes. that's me. That's me in second grade. Gosh. Yeah, she's so. Can you believe cute. I didn't have braces? And me neither. No, Mo and I never had braces, teeth? and that's one thing we have in common. But we've had many cavities, we've tons of cavities from bridge. all the sweets we eat. Uh, she's got a bridge, root canal. I've had root canals, lots of crowns. Crowns. We've, we've lost a lot of um, temporary crowns to pieces of pie for me. We're the queens of comedy. We are because the, of all of our crowns. We're the sugar queens of comedy. <laughs> Flip out. Do you remember when you first went to the dentist and they were like? Like you, there was before cavities and after cavities. Like was it a, for me? I went. I remember, and I had ten, and I had never had them before. And my he was so mad. Oh my gosh! Is because you so you know the so mint. your mouth was just like on fire. You like went in there. I think like, I was Hello. eating candy. Here's the thing: the thought <laughs> is, oh, you don't, you're not brushing. And for me, it was like, no, I was definitely brushing. I wasn't flossing. Okay, I had a ton in between all my teeth because I wasn't flossing. Mm. But my first visit to the dentist was six cavities. I was like six years old. Oh, wow, whoa, one for every year. Yeah. And then the dentist said, I don't know. I think maybe since you're the youngest of the three girls, you have the least enamel. That can't be right. It's not given to you. My mom's like a, a soft serve machine that's like, <laughs> I'm all out. <laughs> I'm all out of enamel, I girl. I swear in the 80s and 90s and any time anytime before the 90s, they just made so much shit up. And they didn't think? know... Well, Tell yeah, because you couldn't fact check them, really. Statistics yeah. do say, according to the National Institute of Dental and Craniofacial Research, cavities affect 92% of adults 20 to age 64, while 42% of children ages 2 to 11 develop cavities in their Where's primary baby teeth. Where's this conspiracy theory? And only— and, Well, I'm the second— Yeah, that would mean that, like, my— Imagine you have, like, 18 children and the last one just has no teeth. Yeah. Yeah. The last oh, the one that no teeth would stand. And no fingernails. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Mo is, comes from a long line of children. I've got three kids, three girls. I don't have kids. I'm just like one of three, I mean. Yes. There's um, five of us. And my was on my mom's dental plan and she was a teacher, so it was pretty okay. I told Otherwise, you ours I was mind. fucked up. Ours was like um, state. We were, yeah, it was state welfare. Mm -hmm. And my mom's teeth got all messed up and they turned brown because they, um, d the more work they did on your teeth, the more the guy got paid Ooh, from the that state. That sounds right about right. Yeah. And he ended up getting in trouble and he couldn't be a dentist after that because my mom, like, even after all that, she, like, sent, she sent, she got him, like, whatever disbarred. Is okay, and, good. Yeah. That's dental. terrible. Yeah. He was getting rewards for the more work he was done. Yeah. And meanwhile, my mom has like wooden teeth. Now she's the got the wooden teeth like George Washington <laughs> she Carver. Does. My moms uh, are fine. She fixed them though. My mom did get braces later in life, which was always weird to see an older person with braces. Did you call her a nerd? Yeah, every day. I said, nerd. <laughs> we, hey, what? And then I would eat an apple in front of her. <laughs> <laughs> so mean. I was like, and you're supposed to be able to have this teacher. <laughs> Can't even eat your prizes. I was thinking about my oh my sister Hannah bit the dentist's thumb. That was kind of like one of the tales of our family that went around, <laughs> jangled around the the family tree. <gasps> he put his thumb in her mouth. Yeah, yeah. It, she would. She bit his thumb. Yeah, pretty hard. That, we were I not don't blame back. her for that. 
I just think she was never somebody who liked to open wide. Yeah. And I I did it as if it was a competition. (laughs) You know? Would you guys get adult braces? Um, I feel like at at this point, I have no... I'm kind of like, what you get is what you get. Yeah. You know, like... You don't get upset. Yeah. Like, I definitely could use a retainer. Your teeth make you you. Yeah. Like, I don't think I'd get veneers. veneers or something. Yeah, I've never really been My interested. oldest sister got veneers, and she made the mistake of going into the bathroom during it and looking in the mirror, and it looked like oh, Gollum. No. She was like, ah. Yeah, just little tiny triangle teeth. Wow. Terrifying. So do you get to live with those for at least a day or something? No. Oh. She just had to pee in the middle of it. I would it. love to be able to and at least live with them for a few Her telling weeks. me that story, I just shoot a, shoot a horror film. Yeah. <laughs> her telling me that story did have me crying laughing. Thinking about my sister having little triangle teeth yeah. that are sharp. I find a lot of times I feel like they put the veneers in t- and they're too big. Yeah, I don't think it's a uh, – look, we can't advise you on what you're going to do with your life because you're going to do it anyway. Yeah. But don't give veneers. Coming from my sister, somebody who's lived it and she has triangle teeth under there. Yeah. Don't do it. Just use your own nail file and kind of – yeah, create, do it yourself. You're saying your don't do it. You're just like, just don't get a dentist to do it. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. And if you need help sawing down your teeth, call Mo and Beth. 1-800-SWEETHEARTS. What is our number for real? <laughs> we do have a number. Someday. It's coming. It's coming. We have a number. And then it, we'll insert it here. We did have some. We don't have any for today, but we, I mean, we have all this cheating episode. We. <gasps> It's very exciting when we open the phone lines up because if you just say, do you have a cheating story? Everybody has yeah. like 300 of them. And they'll like tell all their friends, their parents cheating stories. It's so exciting. And that's kind of something you can look forward to. Yeah. But truly, I, I guess it begs the question, is anybody faithful? <laughs> <laughs> Are you guys the well, cheaters or the people who Whether get, you're cheating ooh, on your diet or cheating or on your spouse. Or do you get cheated on like how many times for each one? Um, I have, and it's nuanced. I think both of ours, yeah. Both of ours, oh, we'd like to say are nuanced. Okay. Tit for tat. You have the best joke about your own experience, which is the Tarzan joke. Oh, right, right, right. right. My personal style is before I let go, I, I'm a, I call myself a Tarzan dater, or I used to at least. It's an old joke. I'm a Tarzan dater. Before I let go of this dick, I'm just like swinging to the next dick. Yeah. So there's really only a brief period of time where you can catch me without a dick in my hand. <laughs> yeah. It, but it's like But very, it's an oldie. I think oldie a but a goodie. Get, I, I think in the, the lesbian community, <laughs> a lot of times that can happen where like someone will be single for six hours. It's like they are like, they've been emotionally cheating with somebody yeah, for yeah, months yeah. and they're like ready to go to the next one. Whenever I was single and I kind of had people who were more friends with benefits, I did feel like they, they could just smell the... <laughs> cookies bacon because <laughs> they'd start to text i'm like how did you know yeah yeah no they how do did you know beth was single for like i mean when you were single for a day i there were like at least three guys in that last time that you were single that contact me first as if i'm your matchmaker they come out of nowhere and they're like love hey, agent. beth is, you know if Beth's single? And I'm like, yeah, I know if she's single. Let's go over those names again. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Let's bring them up. Let's bring them out. <laughs> bring them up. They're in my car. Out. Did you hate it, Beth, being single? Did I hate it? Yeah. Um, I needed to be. So I spent yeah. most of last year, or le- I don't know if we can exaggerate that, but at least seven months sing- single. Yeah. It's my first time in like 18 years and I hate it so much. <gasps> so that's why I'm wondering. Yeah. 18 I years. mean. I think I all again. I also had a, a old joke because it, it was sort of like I said. I think I said some people call it codependent. Mm-hmm. I call it college educated. You don't quit a job before you have another one lined up. You know. <laughs> oh my God, that's so that me. was sort of that was my attitude for a long time. Yeah. And then you know you gotta you gotta grow up someday, still. Yeah. Um and. But take, dating in LA, I feel like is like. Oh, a nightmare. Really like a, good? Like a oh. special type of hell. Yeah. That no one really understands. I, I hear you on that. And I, I think I got burned by the previous person before I was single for a long time. And when you get burned hard, you, you, you got to heal. Yeah. Yeah. Because you actually are physically unable to feel anything. I was just, I was emotionally bereft, romantically paralyzed. You know, when you just can't even imagine what could possibly turn you on. Just nothing from like here down. Yeah. Did but you then, use the apps? Um, no. 
I didn't use the apps. The only time I used the apps was to find the person who ended up being like, you know, lying a lot about themselves. And Oh, I didn't know you met on an app. I met that last um, guy on Raya. Oh, really? Yeah, the tall guy. Oh my God, I didn't know that. Yeah. That's funny. Raya's the worst of all of them anyway. So Yeah, um, I don't know. I think too, I remember when I was on Raya briefly, I did remember seeing like Channing Tatum and, and um, Matthew Perry, rest in peace. And... I, of course, am going to swipe on those, like, yes. Yeah. But I also felt like even while I did it, um, I was like, these guys are p- being paid to be here. Yeah. It this feels is, very active. They're just being paid. Like, maybe oh, they are just active in a friendly picture. way. I feel like even Channing said something like, I'm here for friends. I'm like, just say you're here for money. I mean, just say I'm that. I'm here for friends? Yeah. No. Matthew Perry was here for friends. Yeah. <gasps> Mo. But I guess he would have loved that. He would have loved that. And we don't know that for sure because neither of us were a close personal. He would have thought friend. we were funny. Um, <laughs> I remember Sarah Silverman has a great um, anecdote about the fact that she got an audition for Friends one day and and was like, Friends? The show is called Friends? That's the stupidest yeah. thing I've ever heard. Yeah, it is. And then it went on to be like, you know. It's one of those shows. Yeah, it's one of those shows where like the log line is like six friends meet and have some fun. And I know. you're like, this got this got through pilot season. I know. And nowadays it has to be like, you're donating your eggs, but it turns out you're a demon. And then when the eggs come out, they hatch into zombies that kill the universe 24 years from now. And you start as a gay woman, but you obviously <laughs> become straight by the end of it, so that we don't lose any followers. <laughs> <laughs> and then Hulu's like, we'll take two. <laughs> Hulu, if you're listening, no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Please take two. Please we take two. We have some donuts for you guys. Oh my okay, God, it's incredible. A sweet treat. Okay. I think we should go basic first. It's, like, it's yum yum. It doesn't get more basic than that. But Thank All right. you, Steph. Thank you. Problem. Oh my gosh. I feel like this is kind of one of those situations where you guys are going to have to have some too. Yeah. This looks this is like a lot. Can I just say? Mo's just going for what she no, wants just, without no, even no, consulting no, no. me. I just, here, I don't want to touch it. Oh, okay. Touch I see. Or, this one looks like my nipples what's on after yeah, midnight. That looks under your green sweater. <laughs> <laughs> Can you see it? Yeah. Okay, good. Yum yums are open 24 I, this hours. This is actually my first I know they're yum-yums. not our sponsor, but. I don't they think I've ever had yum yums either. They play their cards right. Okay, so which one are All you right. thinking? Well, we should each try a bunch of them. Do you want to try my nipple or? Sort of. Beth and I both love cinnamon rolls. That's true. Let's try this one to start. Yeah. I'm going to bite it over that. Yeah, just bite it. Give me one of those napkins. Should I bite it over the box? We should have an OnlyFans. We should have an OnlyFans. This is sort of the ASMR are there, portion of the show. Are there OnlyFans where it's just eating donuts but there's nothing sexual about it? Mm. Someone will find it sexual. Oh, shit. They can kind of make anything sexual, right? Yeah. Mmm. Okay. Yum yum donuts. This is my first time trying you. No, because they're not a sponsor. I'm like, I would never pick this one up. This would not be the first one I pick up because I'd be like, that's not going to be a good cinnamon roll. Because it's a donut, not a cinnamon roll. Okay, I hear you on that. <laughs> I have to say that stuff, but. Oh. It's a donut. Okay, this is a fritter. That reminds me of a line from the music, man. Fritter. Oh my and god, wine. I love that musical. Me too. And no one ever knows it. Did you um did you were you ever in it? No, I think my dad made me watch it when I was a kid and mm. for some reason the song's really stuck. It's a classic for a reason. Who were you again? I was okay, I just ate a fritter, by the way. And it's good. I mean, it's sugary. Fritter in a way. Okay, my character right. in The Music Man was Eulalie McKechnie Shin. Oh my God. And I totally based it off of that movie because she was like, um, one Grecian in, two Grecian in. So she would do these like little dance moves with the old ladies. And then she, on her foot, one of the more famous lines was, I have a bunion there that bothers me. That's an incredible line. Yes. Wait, no. The ori- but yeah, that's who I was. Yes, the answer is yes. Eulalie McKechnie Shin, the mayor's wife, was my role in The Music Man. Wait, so your line was, I have a bunion. I had so many lines. <laughs> but okay, I'm sorry. that was one of them. 
And I don't know if I had any songs. Oh, pick a little, talk a little, pick a little, talk a little, cheep, 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 talk a lot, pick a little more. He left River City. I think you and Sam, my wife, would be really happy together. <laughs> she's, if you, she's a music, yeah. she's a musical baby. I ha I wake up with like people singing musicals, and she's been teaching them to our daughter. Yeah, and it's just like it's You're different trapped. when it's twenty four hours a day. But I agree, and I am learning a lot. Well, <laughs> okay, so the Music Man is totally. Um, who was the original guy? Can you remember his name? Music Man, the original, original actor. Cast? Yeah, or maybe it was in the movie. But it is a classic. What is it about? I don't even remember. Basically, you have um, Harold Hill, who is this traveling salesman. And he sells, he tries to get the whole community basically hooked on music to buy a mail order an instrument, right? But he, spoiler alert, he's a scam artist. Oh, oh. And nobody is going to get any instruments. Is he a cult leader? I mean, Wait, is he, he a has bad the guy? power. He is a bad guy. Oh. But he falls in love with the town li librarian. Mm. And why? Because Classic. she's hard to get. She's a little snoot. She's quiet. Head in a book. Hard to get. Yeah. She's not about to buy a flute, you know? And she's all shh in the library, which is kind of a fun little number. It's a lot of shh. Wow, you really remember it. I don't yeah. know. Yeah, <clears throat> I was going to, I should have tried to guess what it was he because comes, that's not what I thought No, me either. And we should next time have you guess. But he goes to her workplace to harass her. And it's like, Marion. And then there's some other word and then librarian. <laughs> um, I can't remember, but. <laughs> Maybe it was the. And Marian. then. Yeah, the, the like, like I should write musicals. Okay, so I don't want to spoil too much, but you can, he ends up, get, you know, long enough catching feelings for Marion and the little boy that he was going to sell this trumpet to. He doesn't really want to disappoint, and he ends up kind of making things right. I think his name was ugh, that's him. Robert Preston. Robert Preston and Barbara Cook and Barbara mm. Cook. The original. She is an ingenue. Of the show, and I was the comedic relief, which is kind of often what I did in these musicals. I'm not interested in that. Were you musical. ever in a play, Mo? I was in. Uh, I was a pilgrim, <laughs> <laughs> in second grade. Mo uh, was a pilgrim, and that kind of has stuck with you ever since. Yeah, no, I was very sweaty as a child. I was very <laughs> like, like icebreakers made me nervous. Really? So I was not. Yeah, I was not. Did you have any lines as the pilgrim? Nope. But I got left on stage, and it was, like, my first big laugh in life, I remember. Because, like, they couldn't see me. I was off to stage, and then I, like, kind of opened my eyes, and, like, scenes would be going on from the play. And it, all the parents were just laughing. <laughs> uh, I just remember the laughs. I was like, <laughs> soak it up. Attention. And that's when she caught the acting bug. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> she just wants to play dead bodies on SVU. I'd be great at that. <laughs> Can you be real still? Yeah. Try it. I can sleep. Okay. Pretty still. You're hired. Wait, Mo, come back. <laughs> okay, he's here. That was scary. We lost you. Okay, here's another mm -hmm. donut. There's so many to try. Part what do you like, think? I should feel like what I should do you save think? them. Well, the problem is, is Beth and I, we also eat the very expensive frou-frou donuts around town. We've tried a lot of sweets, and that's where you can kind of rely on us for the best donut. Yeah. Wreck. I'd and say right if, now, nothing what do you think? beats Bob and Grandma's. Yeah. Nothing beats those donuts at this moment in time. In Eagle Rock. Um, fluffy, great donuts made fresh. Yum Yums is mm. like... Oh, wait. Did you see that? Was that your tooth? You guys? <laughs> a string of spit went from my mouth <laughs> my God. to the donut. It's cruel intentions. No, that is my dad. <laughs> <laughs> We're witnessing you becoming your father. You know, that only other time that's happened to me where I was like, oh my gosh, I'm my dad. When I was sitting like this. <laughs> it's hand down like this. Just like this. And it's it's kind of like foot like this and hand down like this. Uh. And spittle from the food to your mouth and it kind of stays. I'm and I sure find he it disgusting. doesn't mind. And I just did it. You're becoming your dad. I'm sorry. I'm becoming mine. 
I, I guess I'm going to have to become an actor in Florida. <laughs> Follow in his footsteps, take over the family business. My dad is a sign spinner in Orlando, Florida. He was out, what's today? The 17th? 18th, 19th. 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 Well, a couple days ago on St. Patty's Day, he was out there promoting my special as a leprechaun. Wow. At which, uh, re- what, yeah. bar? The bar? No, he just finds a corner oh. dresses like a dresses like a con. <laughs> yeah, this is true. Yeah. And he has a sign uh, for my poster for If You Didn't Want Me Then, which is currently streaming on Netflix. He, he would Honestly, be famous in LA. Her. What's that? Promotional king. Yeah, for yeah. real. Yeah, starsoncall.com. He did more for your special than Netflix did as far as advertising goes. And that is a fact. Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Fortune Fumester was like, can I hire your dad for my Orlando show? I was like, he'd absolutely love it. Yeah. What do you want him to dress as? Chef Big Butt? (laughs) Chef Big Butt's my favorite. favorite, That's one of the most asked for. Chef (laughs) Big Butt or Carmen Miranda the Gorilla. Some of his names of the characters I just— Starsoncall.com. Yeah, his website's— There he is. Dressed like some sort of yellow thing. That looks like a leprechaun. That one's disturbing. No, that's not his leprechaun. That's like yellow man. Oh, yeah. Looks like a Bali. He's yellow man. I don't even know. Sometimes he asks me for advice and I tell him and then he just covers a shirt and puffy And paint. does he just do this? Or? Yeah, people pay him. Yeah, oh, wow. go to stars on starsoncall.com. Starsoncall.com. Everybody, like, I will say this, and this is part of the new hour too. It's just a moment of it. There oh, he is. Oh, my God. There's Jimmy D. Money. What's the pig? Art the pirate. I said it should be Arj the pirate, but no. I love and then the pig is it. most upsetting because <laughs> if you, I don't know if he has it still on the website, but if you wherever the other characters are, if you scroll down in the pig costume or wherever it may be, it might be on a character page or something. He, he's made a little fupa, a fupa. I don't know why I said fupa. <laughs> I can find fupa and faux pas. <laughs> Pow. A faux pas. Ooh, a fupa faux pas. And he's got like, ooh. Ooh, can we no, call that's him? This, you want to call him right now? Yeah, let's call him. FaceTime or? No, that number. Is that his cell phone? Yeah. <laughs> that's his yes, cell phone. call him. That's the thing. People are always sort of like, is your li- are, are your jokes real? And I'm like, I can't speak for all comedians. People think comedians are lying, right? A lot of us are but lying. But also, you say a the lot website. Of people think, you say the website on your. Can you imagine you created this website with an actor? I'm sure somebody would. But yeah. the point is, I you're nodding, and that gives me the confirmation. Some like a lot of people think comics are lying. And again, yeah. I can only speak for myself. You do a lot of things pulled from your life. Yeah, everything I've done on stage is my life. Yeah, I've made it funnier because that's my job. Mm-hmm. But like. I'm telling you the truth. My dad really did feed and trap 91 raccoons. The things that they think are fake, fake are oh, like I've had the somebody details. go about a heckler. They're like, was that a plant? I'm oh, like, the plants are what hilarious. What are you talking about? Did I plant? I don't want to anybody ruin to interrupt. Show? Yeah, and my friend teaches a comedy class, Betty Smithsonian. Mm-hmm. She's a Philly comic, and she said what she was kind of telling me. She's had a student in the past that had kind of said, "Isn't that good?" And when a heckler interrupts the show, kind of gives you more material. I was like, no. Yeah, People absolutely paid absolutely not. Katie. Our first guest. This is our first guest. Okay, he's actually been kicked off the show already. <laughs> oh, I love how I, well, this is disturbing. I went to go FaceTime my dad and my boyfriend came up, but. Um, that is disturbing. Disturbia. He changes his number to stars on call. No offense, dad. He can't hear Well, this. I mean, he we can see him, know you know. He's right here. <laughs> he will pick up. Ask him if he has any new characters. Papa. Hey, Bert Stelling. Hey, Bert Stelling. Hey, sorry, bye. Hello? Hey, Bert. How are you doing? <laughs> hey, Beth. Hey. How you doing? Hey, BS. Hey, BS. Yeah. BS, you know, Bert Stelling, Beth Stelling. Yeah, I see what you do hey, there. I thought it was going to be, uh, what you call it, um, DVD, uh, FaceTime, but I guess I, it's not. It's not FaceTime this time because I didn't want to see your face. <laughs> 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 you rascal and Joey got up he got out of the closet that's one of his wiener nests is in his closet <laughs> and, and boom he, that noise I told you about that the other day as soon as he hears that oh right right, right. Joey the wiener dog uh, he came out of the closet but physically yeah. not metaphorically <laughs> yeah exactly. and, and Joey from Ocoee yeah he's from Ocoee that's where they adopted him from mm. yep Exactly, my baby, my son. I kept on trying after I had you and Megan and Honey and 
because all the women at work, you know, teachers kept on saying, you're going to keep on trying. Every time I had you or Hannah or B or yeah. Megan. They say, are you going to keep on trying for a boy? And you said. I didn't, they didn't say boy. They uh-oh. just said, are you going to keep on trying? I finally got it after Hani was born. That that the that the subtext was male, male. Male. Yeah, I said, "What are you talking about, man? They're girls. They're fine. They're better. <laughs> Come on. I'm legal. I'm legally required to tell you that Mo and I are recording a podcast, and um, oh. she says hi, and you're on speakerphone. Oh, hi. Cool. Yeah, well, that's cool. I'm, I'm, I'm always acting that way, you know, like I'm on speakerphone. I know. No big deal, all that kind of stuff, you know? No. And, and it's, it's, but yeah, uh, uh, getting ready to take baby Joey out here again, all that stuff. Yeah, you got to take uh, him on what? The 47th walk? Yeah. <laughs> He's great. I know one of my neighbors said, you don't have to take him out that much. And even when I do that, sometimes he still wakes me up at night. He did last night. He had to go poopy about three o'clock in the morning. You know, so but I still the perils do. of being a father. But well, there's coyotes out there. Oh yeah, you got to go up with him so he doesn't get mm. eaten up like a delicious wiener. I told you about that, right? Yeah. I haven't seen it. You're kidding. I, I could. I've never seen one. Thirty five years I've been here. They we have him all over about. LA. Coyotes. Have you seen one? You know, oh yeah. With your own eyes? Oh yeah, yeah. We've seen a bunch of them. Holy crap! Kate looked at. They've been killing the cats. They ate two, I think, of ours. The, They've been I killing the, the coyotes. Have been killing the cats. Yeah, there's enough that you street. are just starting to kind of notice that now. Or pardon? <laughs> <laughs> what did you say, you rascal? Uh, so you're noticing that it's been killing the cats because, well, yeah, because we used to have five. Now we only have three. <laughs> I'm sorry. And cat, wow. And the cats look, and they they were looking there for a while, like. A coyote alert. You could tell the way they were, you know, hey, something's happening. They're back there, you know, okay, by the river. Yeah, right. You know, you, you, For the record, alert. they are feral cats. They're not like, none of them are living really? in the house, right? What does that mean, Beth? And, that well, they're not they better? The, Mo had a question yeah. for you, Dad. Oh, oh yes. Yeah, yeah, yeah. My question so was, um, do you have any new characters? Oh, yeah, on do you have any new characters? Stars on call, she said. <laughs> But yeah, I'm always looking for new ideas, and I love it when people say, hey, yeah. And I tell them, hey, I can do any character you want, so long as it's family-friendly, can't be licensed or syndicated. And it's great when you come up with the idea, because then I come up with new characters yeah. that I can use, you know, for well, sure. Well, well, we'll send out a call, right and, in. Yeah. And, and maybe we can come up with your I'm next new draft character. up some. Yeah. yeah because yeah, yeah. Mo and I are starting a podcast, and it's called Sweethearts. And this is episode uh-huh. one, so maybe you could do a sort of sweethearts yeah, we love themed. Donuts, you have, he's shakes, done Cupid candy, in the past. Cupid. Yeah, yeah. Not but I'm stupid, but Cupid. Yeah. <laughs> 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 yeah, yeah, with a heart. You know, um, I kind of love a heart. I on. love that. Yeah. You know, I, I still have, uh, you know, I think I have some, most of that yeah. costume still. And we got to teach yeah, you how to yeah. use your phone so you can listen to it. This because you're going to be in it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, the, yeah, Kay could probably, you know, help me with that. Although she's got a, uh, what do you call it, Android, which is different than my iPhone. It's has that, funky. yeah, has, has that led you to not want to be with her anymore? <laughs> no, she just, she just likes it for, you know, she's got something that she's gotten used to. She likes the Android. I, I, I have trouble remembering that name, Android. They've actually sent us a cease and desist, so if you could not say that word again. <laughs> <laughs> Don't say Android again? Dad. <laughs> but hey yeah I'm, I'm i'm getting better with this i just don't know how to you know take you know pictures i do it accidentally sometimes <laughs> take pictures and also take video all of a sudden i'm taking it like i'm sitting on the toilet oh and the video's going i take a picture like, or the, the light turns on you know the flashlight or whatever yeah it's, mo and i are actually both sitting on a toilet right now yeah i'm oh taking a video gosh. let me yeah. tell you I just want to make sure that I, uh, I I always wash it, though, after I use the toilet, I'll keep it really, you know, a neat freak that I am, always using baby wipes, everything like that. But, yeah, I'm into that. That sounds really good. You know, I'm into creativity. Oh, my yeah. gosh. All right. So well. Sure. Thanks for calling and asking me about that. Of course. Yeah. Well, and just I'll teach you how to get it on your phone. We have to go now because we have yeah, just yeah, some yeah. other business to tend to on the podcast. Of business. Yeah, I'm really proud of you and everything. Thanks for calling me and Yak, yak, blah, blah, yammer, yammering with me and all that stuff. No problem. I so love improv. Yeah, yeah. But <laughs> we'll figure out this and we'll call you back soon. And I love you, Dad, okay? 
Love you too. Keep smiling. Keep fighting that depression, anxiety, and paranoia. All right. Love you. Should be worse than it. Love you too. You too. Thank you, little sweetheart. Bye. Always thinking about you. <laughs> Wait, what was that tagline? <laughs> what was that tagline at the end? Keep smiling. Keep following that party road. Fight depression, anxiety, and... Does he say that every time? And, yeah. Depression, He's very repetitive. Yeah. My dad FaceTimed us when we were in Rome, and he had just gotten pulled over by the cop because... <laughs> His neighbor was threatening to do a, a restraining order against yes. him for telling him to smile. Yeah. <laughs> and I think that's a great lesson for any man to think you can tell anyone to smile. <laughs> is that the cops will come after you. <laughs> <laughs> He's talking about a restraining order where we don't stop telling him to smile. I, now I'm going to take out restraining orders. <laughs> <laughs> Say it one more time. Anyway, so yeah, if you guys want to uh, weigh in on what character dad should be yes, uh, to promote sweethearts, call in. Yes, call in, sweeties. We want to hear. The number hear. will be on the screen. You don't have to be, be from the Midwest great. to weigh in with your opinion. Yeah, that's true. But obviously brownie but points if Midwest you is best. I love that they put that on a t-shirt. You're like, have you been anywhere else? <laughs> <laughs> There's a little asterisk on the back. It's like, California is also pretty cool. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I don't know if Midwest is best, but it's great for a visit. It's great for material. And so many of my loved ones are still there. Yeah. We love visiting. We love leaving them. <laughs> <laughs> we love to leave them there. Have them in our hearts. <sighs> Um, what did you get, Jersey Mike's? Yeah. You know that's my favorite. I was telling Sam, who is my wife, just to mm -hmm. catch everyone up. My wife. Uh, I was telling her how much I love Jersey Mike's. <laughs> <laughs> I used to be a Subway girl, a Subway girly. Um, I was too, but I, I, th I do believe it was financially. Yeah, was best. and you put the chips in the sandwich, and it's fine. But last time I got it, my mom was like, "Oh my." My, you know, my coworker, he got really sick. I was like, mom, I just bought it. I haven't even put it in my mouth yet. I'm on my way home. Like, and she's just like, oh, he got so sick. He couldn't come into work for two weeks. You're kidding. Two weeks is so long. That's like listeria. I think he, yeah, I really think he was. My Ill. mom also was on a kick. Oh, oh, I remember an old joke of mine. I don't know if I ever made it onto album or anything like that, but it was my mom called me with big news. And it was like, did you hear a coyote walked into the Quiznos? <laughs> What's up with my parents and coyotes? They're divorced, but they both coyotes. love talking about coyotes. That's why they fell in love. Yep, the big coyote. The big I didn't coyote know Quiznos, catch. are they still in business? Yeah, I don't know. I don't yeah. know either. That Quiznos to me it. is like the Chipotle, is like the Qdoba of Chipotle. Sorry, Wait. sorry. Oh. Qdoba, Wait. yes. Well, let's do the I know analogy properly. Yeah. Quiznos is to... Is to... <laughs> Jersey Mike's. Okay. No, I would say Subway, right? Okay, Quiznos is like, to is, Subway. Are you saying Quiznos is better than as Subway? As Qdoba is to Chipotle. They're okay, just different. Then maybe, They're just different. Well, I always thought Quiznos was elevated I because they toasted their subs. Yeah, and when I hear Subway you on that. didn't, they talk. Listen, then Subway. They toasted before remember the Subway. Day? First of all, do you remember these two things? <laughs> I hate Do you remember political. when you could smoke in bars and Subway didn't heat their sandwiches? Yeah. Those were the days. Those were. I the loved days. smelling like cigarette smoke and having a just a dry, cold. Subway Mo and I used to smoke cold cut if trio. Real. Really? Yeah, we used to smoke cigarettes. Cigarettes are what delicious. Did you smoke? I have definitely not had more than a couple um, sips in the last yeah. few years. No, I, had I haven't one, had. After the breakup, I did have a couple. I I kicked up a tunes. I haven't had a cigarette since. I mean, like I've only had a few. The the cigarettes I've had in my life are basically with you. So that wasn't a lot. You, Sounds like I'm a bad influence. You are. You are a bad influence. I'm a naughty girl. Um, you know, my friend. She used to say her parents. Um, her parents told her that she was allowed to smoke two packs of cigarettes in her life. Told her that when she was like 12. When we were 13, she like would say it was like it was two packs every two days. I you're mean, kidding like, me? Yeah, she. Cause so every time I see her, I'm like, I thought you were about are you to tell me some great solution to that. No, no. Like that if she, they told her that. So that's how she was able to limit herself. Yeah. They told her that she as a kid, wild. just to be like, listen, you can try it, but only two packs for your entire life. It feels like I'm kind of the only one on this shift right now. Well, let me know if one is. Okay. This is a Boston cream, which delicious. is my nephew's favorite. I do like a Boston cream. Mmm. 
Okay. So what do you think though? Are you like these donuts Custard. are like if you are are they like yeah, if I am desperate or if I don't like like I do like my coworkers, I don't like my coworkers. I need <laughs> I love my coworkers. I just Look, I'm, I, I say think sorry, they're totally I'm totally edible. They're not disgusting. Yeah. And there's a lot of positives to them. Am I seeking it out? No. Yeah. But they're doing great. Thank you for being honest. Yeah. We can only go up from here, right? Yeah. Like start out really low. I still feel like you're being really extra sweet. Really? Yeah. I don't think these are trash. I like them. You know what's trash? Hmm. <laughs> California donuts? Colorado donuts? What's the place in Portland? Oh, yeah. We've talked about that. What is that place? Know, What's the I'm famous blanking. place in Portland? Voodoo. Voodoo. Voodoo Donuts. Yeah. I don't know what's happened. It's like, this is what I mean. Sometimes I was going like, bring those actually. Was Subway always bad or did we change? Okay. Uh, it was Voodoo Donuts once good and we changed? I think Or did they, they get special. so big they couldn't keep up? They started adding a little bit of plastic slowly to every batch. And now they last in your body for up to five to seven years. <laughs> My problem was that they were like, when they put this cereal on it, the cereal wasn't... It was stale. Yeah. There's yeah, definitely was something they need to deal with there. Yeah, they went too far. They went too far. They got, yeah. They they got they're basically greedy. like Homer, there's a Homer Simpson donut, I think. And that's fine, but I don't, it's, it's too much. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Even I draw a line. You got to draw a line. Yeah. Do you guys like Dunkin' Donuts? Dunkin', I'm not, I'm not against. I'm almost going to go donut hole at Dunkin'. Yeah. Like over donut. Is yeah. That crazy. I'll get the car. I'll get a Dunkin' I'll get a Donuts coffee, coffee at the, at the airport if I need to. Yeah. And I might even get like an egg and cheese bagel, but there's I, there there's like a level of food and drink that you can get at the airport where you're like it's You're trapped. Yeah. You have to get it. It's the best thing you're gonna get at the airport. But LA has like Alfred coffee at LA. Del- in the Delta Terminal. Yeah. But American, no. And you know Americans I'm my number one. American Airlines, and your number one is United. Yeah. And United hurt me so bad, I haven't been able to fly them in years. United's having a tough time right now. Yeah. They're losing like, a lot of wheels and shit. Like yeah, that. it's always like, like the person the who was like, Cosby was nice to me, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Actually, this is kind of funny. I saw this. I was looking for something. I find this old article, and in it, I said, it was when I first started comedy and I was, they were like, who's your favorite comedians? And I'm saying, did I send it to you? I'm like, I'm like saying who my favorite comedians are. And then I said, and, and of course, Louis CK. And, and I was like, have you, ever, have you ever watched him? Uh, no, that was the thing. It's like, I never watched any of his stuff, but it was one of those things where like comedians would be like Bill Hicks and he'd be yeah. like, oh my God, I love Bill Hicks. I'm like, I don't the know The Chicago dudes like it. loved like ranting and raving about Kinnison and Bill Hicks yeah. and Lenny Bruce. And I don't know if they did Lenny. I genuinely, I mean, like when I watch Sam Kinnison, I would be like, I feel like I, I'm like, it, this is making me Under anxious because he's yelling. And same with Bill Hicks. He'd be yelling. And I was just like, I don't understand. Like, it's just something And I a lot of understand. the guys on the scene did kind of emulate them, you know, which I'm not sh- throwing shade. It's just sort of like some people find their way to their voice differently. But right. there were a lot of guys that were kind of emulating the, the some oh, of the Oh, for sure. Uh, I just thought it was so funny to be like, greats. and of course, Louis C.K. I know. And I was like, I never even watched one minute of what he did. <laughs> but I'm like, what do you guys like? Well, that's the, that is kind of the funny thing too. It's like, I can't blame you because when I started, I was like 22. And I can't say either of us was like full on pick me, but uh, – it is a very male-dominated scene, especially back then. And it was almost like a little bit of a survival thing. Sort of like when they're talking about Hicks and stuff, I would always be like, <laughs> yeah. I would never be like, I don't know who you guys are talking about because I don't watch comedy. Yeah. Like I would never oh, say no, how no, I actually no. felt at the time. And you never should. I wouldn't just do trying it to be now, cool probably. and belong and but sometimes you figure don't, it out. Yeah. And you're at a party and you're like, I don't want this conversation to go en- on any longer. So I'm not, I don't want you to explain what something is or who someone oh, is to yeah. me. Yeah. But they definitely, and also they were so loud and boisterous that it, it, anytime someone is actually pretty big around me, it still kind of makes me get a little smaller. Yeah. Um, you so, don't match the energy. I don't know. I don't think I do. Even sometimes when my monitor is too loud and facing me, because uh, that's another story. But sometimes you get to a venue and they're like, "Is this oh, how you yeah. like it?" And I'm like, "I don't 
like it anyway, other than just a microphone and going that way. Yeah. <laughs> like whatever you read is not what I wrote. You know, I the writer is not me. Yeah. Um, anyway, when the monitor is back to me, I basically turn into Delilah and I'm like, hey, how's everybody doing? Because I can hear myself yeah. so loudly. I know, but I love that because I'm like, oh, I, hate I it. Am it brings my energy too, too low. Delilah. Like that's why we're not wearing headphones because I would be like, hey, sweethearts. We've reached the end of our show, and now it's time to sort of get cozy in your bed. Think about what sugar you had right before bed so you have enough energy to dream. And thank you for listening. I've been Beth Stelling. And I'm Mo Welch. And if you want to come back to another time, I think you just have to let it go to the next episode. I actually don't know how this works. The but next thank you for listening starts to our five, first episode. Four, four, three, three two, two, one.